dear students welcome to epg pathsala i am sangamitrai from the department of textiles and clothing avinash lingam university today we are going to look into non store retailing that comes under fashion designing and apparel industry actually retailing is a distribution of finished products to the ultimate consumer it is also defined as a set of activities or steps used to sell a product or a service to consumer for their personal or family use this is the last link in the distribution chain and is the direct interface of the process with the customer it not only involves the sales of products in the store but also includes services like those offered in the restaurant parlor or rental agencies the objective will help you to differentiate the types of non store retailing and differentiate the types of retailing methods and it may also help you to understand the strategies used for retailing various products now we will look into the types of retailing retail industry provides innumerable opportunities to entrepreneurs and workforce as sales person and clerks this industry also has opportunities for people interested in determining what goods will be sold getting those goods to the right place at right time and managing the operations finance and administration for retail companies retailers usually carry out specific activities such as anticipating customers wants developing assortments of products acquiring market information and financial methods in present situation our retailer not only exists in brick and mortar form but also by using telephone direct mails television in the form of tele shopping networks emails using internet or absolutely in personally by using vending machines retailing units can be classified into two groups on the basis of nature of interaction between the retailer and customers namely store retailing and non store retailing we can say that store retailing is a traditional form of retailing wherein customer physically goes to the store to buy goods or services retail transactions are carried out through face to face interactions between retailers and customers in the case of store retails in store retailers operate from fixed point of sale location to attract the high volume of walk in customers usually stores have extensive display of merchandise and use mass media advertisements to attract customers they sell products and service to the customers for personal or household consumption but some retailers also serve business and institutional clients such as office banks designers and other suppliers in addition to selling products some retailers also provide after sale service such as repairs alterations and installations non store retailing sells product to customers in absence of a retail store sometimes interaction between two entities takes place without face to face interactions most of the non store retailing mediums are well known on account of the medium used by them to interact with their customers non store retailing non store retailing is the selling of goods and services outside the confines of a retail facility this term describes that retailing takes place outside shops or stores that is out of a fixed premises or retail locations and this non store distribution channel can be divided into direct selling and distant selling and a direct selling includes all forms of party sales and all forms of selling in customer houses and offices and sometimes even garage sales in non store retailing the retailer has direct relationship with this customer in around 20% of the retail sale in india is from non store the proportion of non store retailing is growing steadily it is classified as direct selling mail order telemarketing automatic vending electronic retailing we'll look into direct selling in direct selling there is no fixed retail location here the direct contact of the retailer is made with this ultimate customer it is highly interactive me form of retailing mostly products like cosmetics jewelry furnishings all sold in this manner that retailers visit home place or workplace of the customers to sell their products it is also known as network marketing where the products and services are sold face to face and the methods of direct selling three common methods are adopted the first one is person to person selling under this representatives from manufacturers and companies sell their services and products directly to customers at home office or workplace on one to one basis and the next one is party plan in this system sales are made to individual who are part of a group 
In this method, the salesperson invites a hostess to hold a party for 8 to 10 potential clients. The products are demonstrated and the audience are made to experience the product. And the third one is the multi-level network. Under this system, salesperson work as distributors and also recruit some other people under them as distributors. A distributor with a multi-level company receives commission as a portion of the income those distributors generate. Some of the benefits of direct selling are personal attention to customer, convenience of time and place of the presentation. This method provides an opportunity to meet and socialize with people. Further, direct selling provides flexible schedules and is a good way to earn extra income and own business. Limitation is that it's high cost, it's most expensive form of selling and consumers may have a negative view on direct selling. Now we we'll look into distance selling. Distance selling can be done through mail order, catalog sales, telephone calling and automated vending and electronic commerce. This includes online shopping, internet, global distribution systems and teleshopping. Mail order and catalog sales. Under this, the buying of goods or services is by postal delivery. That is, the consumers place an order for the required products with their seller through some remote methods such as telephone call or a website. The, the products are, will be delivered to the customers directly to an address given by the customer. And next is the telemarketing. It is also called telephone selling where the salesperson initiate the contact with the buyer and he may try to complete a sale over the phone. This method is sometimes considered as cold canvassing as the clients are selected from a phone directory. And then the next one is online shopping. Here the customers directly buy goods or services from a trader over the internet using a web browser. And next we will see on vending machines. And uh, vending machines uh, provides product services on, in a machine. That is the products are dispensed through a machine to the consumer when the consumer or the customer deposit cash or he may use a credit card. In non-store retailing, retailers approach their customers and sell their products through various methods. These methods may include peddlers, mail order houses, electronic catalogs, video shopping, home television and internet shopping. Peddlers. Peddlers are persons who sell things in small amounts often by traveling to different places or one who offers products for sale along the street or from door to door. We can define a peddler as a retail dealer who brings goods from place to place, exhibit them for sale. The origin of the word may be taken from the French term called pied or from the Latin word pedus meaning foot. Here, Peddler is referred to as a petty trader traveling on foot. Peddlers usually travel on foot carrying their wares or merchandise by means of person or on a vehicle or animal down. An individual can be identified as a peddler in the sense if he or he has not don't have a fixed place to do his business but he carries the goods on himself or using a vehicle from place to place. The products may be offered to the consumers for immediate sale and delivery and it has to be sold to the customers as opposed to the dealers who sell such products. Nowadays, many peddlers use motorized vehicles to transport themselves and their commodities. Typically, they operate door to door at an organized events or on events, fairs and exhibitions. Peddlers have a significant role in supplying isolated populations. In modern times, their market share has been drastically reduced due to various reasons such as increase in density of population and buying power, encouraged sedentary modern transport, mail orders, refrigerators and other technologies. The large advances in the industrial mass production and transportation, modern retail and distribution network, the rise of popular mail order catalogs offered another way of people in rural areas or remote areas to obtain items not readily available in local stores. Mail order houses. Mail order houses are retail formats in which product details are communicated to the customers through a catalog, letter or brochures. Usually this method of retailing is suitable for specialty products. 
The system includes buying and selling merchandise or services through the post. Catalog and direct mail retailers contact customers using printed material. Mail order retailing relies on the effective product description to sell the merchandise. Magazines, CDs, clothing and assorted household items are often sold through this format. Mail order provides convenient selling but only limited service. This method is an effective way to cover a large geographical area where buyers are not within one location. Methods of mail order Mail order uses flyer or catalog to communicate with the customer. A mail order catalog is a company's publication that contains a list of products from a company. Companies that publish and send mail order catalogs are referred to as catalogers within the industry. The customer place an order for the product within the tra with the trader through methods like a telephone call or a website. The products are delivered directly to an address specified by the customer such as a home address. Some retailers also allow the products to be sent directly to the third party consumer which is an effective way to send a GIF or out of town recipient. There are two types of organization retail their products through mail. They are general merchandise and specialty catalog retailers and next one is the direct mail retailers. The general merchandise catalog retailers use assorted products are published in catalogs and are periodically mailed to their customers. Specialty catalog retailers focus on a particular product categories, examples cosmetics or designer wear. Whereas direct mail retailers mail brochures and pamphlets or a specified product or service to a buyer at a specific time. Most direct mail retailers are interested in making a single sale from a particular mailing while catalog retailers like to maintain relationship with customers over time. Supermarkets sometimes mail order their products for promotion. Customers do not make face to face contact with sellers. Mail order firms use personalized letters and catalogs. Address lists may be brought from the mailing research firms through advertisements in suitable media including internet. Nowadays, except industrial equipments or two bulky goods, almost many things are sold through mail orders. The effectiveness of mail order. Generally, rural consumers who lack ready access to retail stores prefer catalog and direct mail retailing. Also, the rise of dual income families and people with limited time for shopping in stores helped catalog retailing gain popularity. Now, it appeals to a broad section of consumers. Some products like apparel, Hoisery, softwares, gifts and pharmaceutical categories experience higher than average growth. Direct mail refers to the delivery of an addressed mail by post. This offers flexibility in terms of planning. The supplier determines when the mail is to be sent out. It remains as a penetrating media. It approaches the customer at a time when he or she will not be distracted. In this way, it processes a high degree of confidentiality. In mail order catalogs, the seeing or reading process that recipients participate is divided into four stages. First, at the first stage, customer will see the message and determine whether it is relevant to them. And the next step will be the headers or the images or the postscript. The third one is the decision making and the last one is the stage of conformity. We can see the elements of a mail order. Each mail order will be divided into four phases or the four elements. The first one is the envelope, the next the letter, third one is the enclosed folder or the brochure or the information leaflet and the fourth one is the reply card or we call it as reply envelope. The envelope, it's the exterior and the exterior should be such that it arouses interest to the viewer. It should uh, be stamped with a regular postage stamp or a postage paid stamp. And the next one is the letter. The letter should entice the reader to read it and it should appear pleasant at first glance itself. It should also contain main message point and repeat it further on in the letter. The enclosed folder. It should contain all the related information. The fourth one is the reply card or the reply envelope. The primary function of a reply card is to facilitate and stimulate the customer to respond to the mail. Direct mail and catalog retailing provides business opportunity because the startup costs are relatively low. 
but mailing and printing cost of the catalogs may be high and it is hard to capture customers attention every year. Also the time required to design, develop and distribute catalog makes it difficult for the catalog and direct mail re retailers to respond quickly to the new trends of the fashion. Electronic catalogs. Electronic catalogs or otherwise electronic product catalogs we may call it as EPCs. E electronic product catalogs play a major role in improving retailing on World Wide Web. They provide opportunity to firms to showcase their products to a large market on the internet. Information about the product with the textual descriptions, photos and in some cases audio and video clippings may also be provided. Several factors are involved creating EPCs that is making it interesting. They may be basic criteria that must be met to have a success around any sales format such as representative and interesting product display, description and prompt delivery, variety of payment options and responsive customer service. Some of the key factors of electronic catalogs that is the EPCs. The electronic product catalogs contains the basic product information with printed catalog image. The information and providing a user friendly interface by photos, textual descriptions, personal shoppers and product demonstrations. To market the product, these catalogs must contain sufficient and pertinent information about the product. It usually consists one to two paragraphs of text describing the product. Additional accessory options, choice of color, size and quantity. It helps consumers to perform a comparative shopping than the traditional paper format. Electronic catalogs will usually present the photos with a transparent background to give the image a cleaner, sharper look. Some companies use low resolution graphics to speed up the process of viewing a page since accessing speed is an important factor in displaying a product or image in an electronic product catalog. Computers, clothing industries are some of the industries which use electronic product catalogs. Advantages of catalogs. Here, the customers can shop when it is convenient for them. He help him to save resources on account of time and traveling cost. And the relevant product information is available in detail in the catalog. And there is no undue pressure to buy the unlike or the retail store shopping. And there is space for unlimited product display. And also the catalog will help you to reduce the cost of sales for over lower overheads. Selling process completely under the control of marketer and can maintain accurate inventory control and timely and accurate analysis. It can be operated 24 hours a day, 7 days a week through toll free telephone lines and call centers. Customers can be reached irrespective of geographical location. Modern direct marketing techniques allow prospective clients to be targeted based on their own interest. Video shopping. Another technology adapted in retailing is video shopping. The retailer plays some of his catalogs on discs or tapes for in-home and at store reviewing. The company mails catalogs in the form of video tapes to consumers. The disc contains motion sequence plus color pictures. Product demonstration, fashion shows and footage from commercials are included in it. Some marketing consultants however question whether people will spend half an hour to one hour watching an entire tape and it may confuse them to locate product they want to take a second look at it. Catalog designers also note that a video tape has the capacity to show a very limited number of products and that the production cost of such a venture could be costly. Retailers use video to provide pre-recorded answers to questions frequently asked by the customers. When this video is used in store, the device may increase the productivity because it will help them to reduce the need for the salesperson to provide the basic information often. Home television. The humble TV in our homes has become a third wave shopping channel revolutionizing the way we buy goods and services online. Teleshopping is a retail format in which existing and prospective customers watch a television program demonstrating products and then place their orders for the same one either through telephone, email or internet. Consumers can shop in privacy through home shopping rather than visiting brick and mortar stores and shopping malls. There are three types of television shopping namely cable channels meant for shopping, infomercials 
and direct response advertising shown on TV. Infomercials are TV programs that mix entertainment with product demonstrations following interested customers place orders through telephone or email. However, direct response advertising including advertisements on TV will provide details about the merchandise and an opportunity to order. In India, the Asian Sky Shop, TSN, TSNM are key players in television shopping. The main benefits of a television shopping can be listed as explain it will help you to explain the technical issues more clearly it will also uh, sells from a distance to increase your sales territory and it will reach more customers than with in-person sales calls and it will help you to sell to both existing and new customers it will help you to achieve results that are measurable there are some negative points or negative issues in this television shopping for example the consuming and costly in training for the staff you may need to appoint outside services to prepare a script that might uh, lead you to losing your control over the sales. Internet shopping. Internet shopping can be defined as the act of purchasing product or sales over the internet. It can also be called online shopping, e-shopping or e-retailing. It is a form of electronic commerce whereby consumers directly buy goods or services from a seller over the internet without an intermediary service. Availability of internet in small towns, higher disposable income, um, limited reach to branded retail outlets are the reasons for internet shopping. Everything from flowers to books to apparels from jewellery are sold and online. Customers opt for internet shopping not only for its high level of convenience but also because of broader selections competitive pricing and greater access to information. Many leading companies seek to offer online shopping for it allows retailers to save an inventory handling and maintenance cost and it also offers access to worldwide market, increases customer value and builds sustainable capabilities. In the internet shopping, consumers visit a website or a search engine and find their required product. He then uses shopping cart software to collect various items and can adjust quantity as in a store. The mode of payment can be selected by the customer and the deal is made through the internet. The product may be delivered to the address mentioned by the customer. If any problem occurs in the product delivery or customer is dissatisfied, he can return an item in exchange of either the correct product or even for a refund. This can be done by the customer contacting the retailer. He can pay the shipping and send it back through post. Some online companies have more generous return policies to compensate for the traditional advantage of physical stores. Advantages of internet retailing. Internet retailers can avoid expensive capital investment on store and in-store fittings, salespersons and inventory holding costs. Inven Internet retailers depend on IT integration for their storefront to order processing all the way back to their suppliers. This will help them to reduce the cost of processing all the way back to their suppliers. This helps to reduce the cost of acquiring and delivering throughout the value chain which in turn helps the marketers to share benefits with customers. Internet retailing widens the market to be served and provides national and international presence. Even though there are advantages in internet retailing, there are some disadvantages. The customers must have access to the internet. They should also have a valid method of payment to shop and complete a business. Usually, people with higher level of education and higher per personal income only favors online shopping. Risk of fraud is higher than face-to-face -face transactions. Merchants also face risk fraudulence purchases using stolen credit cards or debit cards or fraudulent repudiation of the online purchase. In the, if the process goes poor, it can create a thorny situation. Some of the problems that shoppers usually face are identity theft, faulty products and accumulation of spyware. Internet retailing has a positive impact on the economy of the nation in particular and the world at a large. In India, it will be a mixture of e-tailing and retailing that is likely to succeed. More and more companies are working hard and reaching out to their customers with the help of internet. On the whole, 
when we talk about the advantages and disadvantages of non store retailing the advantages are it is free from physical retail store and the costing operation are lower than the store retails customer coverage is wider compared with an individual retail location companies do not have to spend large sums or dilute stock buildings new locations or acquiring them this will provide a global market for the retailer with a cheap centralized location this will also help to save time and effort in visiting departmental stores shopping malls etc and still some disadvantages ex exist in non store retailing such as the fear of credit card abuse and mail frauds and uh, detachment in not holding a prospective purchase brings the slow connectivity problems may also be a disadvantage in internet shopping the future of non store retailing when we like to conclude about non store retailing is it is growing at a much faster rate than the store based retailing various forms of non store retail practices have also created a hold in indian market internet retailing and its growth is increasing easy access to internet its reduced cost greater familiarity with the internet its reduced cost with online purchasing methods are some of the reasons some observers predict that non store retailing will handle about more than 30% of general merchandise sold and is a powerful force in the retailing industry the time constraint in the lifestyle of many buyers enhances the non store based retailing in the near future e-tailing will become the core of the retailing business around the world and in india as well thank you